What is up guys, Karma Medic here. A little bit closer. Yeah, I think so. What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I'm back today with another banger MMI video. Today I'm going to be covering ethical dilemmas, which is a really highly requested topic here on the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nasser. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London and I make these banging videos every single week. So do consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you want to see more videos from me on my medical school journey. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Karma Medic. I'm done throwing plugs around. Let's get straight into the video. So today's topic is ethical ethical dilemmas in MMI interviews. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do for these types of questions is do your research. So you wanna do research to see what kinds of questions tend to come up every single year surrounding ethical dilemmas because they will likely come up again. Second thing is that you really wanna show your decision making or flow of logic throughout the question when you're answering it. A lot of the time there isn't going to be a very clear cut answer and what's more important than the final decision that you come to is how you arrived at that decision. So I would make a point to walk the interviewers through your thinking. Why is it that I'm making this decision? Why is it that I'm not making that decision? Medical decision making for ethical dilemmas almost always is very logical, fair and rational. So you don't want to involve emotion at any point in your decision making. However, you do want to be able to show that this is an ethical dilemma. There is a lot of emotion involved and it's not a clear cut, simple, easy decision to make. And in fact, it can be very difficult and have a lot of emotion, even though you shouldn't use that in the decision making. Avoid bringing up any red flags or saying anything that could do harm to the patient or shows that you have a lack of empathy and you should be fine. All right, so now let's jump straight into the question. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen Screen. Maybe somewhere here is probably good. I'll shift a bit this way so you guys can see it clearly. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen so that you guys can follow the question as we go along. Now this question is going to be based off of a discussion that we had with a consultant at King's College Hospital when I was on the renal ward. So quick disclaimer, this ethical dilemma may be a little bit more complicated and a little bit more difficult than the standard MMI question you would expect to see at interview. But the important thing that you take away from this video is the thought process of going through the dilemma and all the different factors that you need to consider when thinking about ethical dilemmas generally. We're going to be covering all kinds of important considerations to think about with the NHS and also with the main medical ethics pillars. So stick around to the end of the video so you make sure you get information on all those things. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the question. So this question revolves around how we can allocate cadaveric kidneys fairly. So cadaveric kidneys are kidneys that come from people who have passed away. Miss X is a 29 year old patient in the general nephrology clinic with a GFR of 28 milliliters per minute who has had type one diabetes since she was seven. So I'm just gonna stop the question there for a second. GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate. And within the kidney, within the nephrons, you have a glomerulus which filters all of the blood through it and then that filtrate passes through the loop of Henle and the different convoluted tubules and then eventually gets to the collecting duct. So the glomerular filtration rate is the rate at which fluid is passing through that glomerul glomerulus, glomerulus. <laughs> the GFR is the rate at which fluid is passing through the glomerulus. Now the reason that's important for this question is that GFR is a proxy or it is an estimate of kidney function. So the lower your GFR, the worse kidney function you're gonna have. And generally for a person of about 30 years old, the normal GFR is gonna be somewhere between 90 and 120. It's always in a range and it depends on your age, but generally speaking, let's say that's the normal value. So we can see that this person clearly has a decreased GFR, meaning they have a decreased kidney function. So next part of the question, she asks to be transferred to the pre-dialysis clinic, which is normally done at a GFR of 20 or less, in order to be placed on the renal transplant list ASAP. She hopes to receive a cadaveric transplant quickly to be able to try for pregnancy. 
Normally, people are only put on the transplant list when they reach a GFR of 15. How do you approach this situation? So this is obviously quite a complicated question. There's a lot of things going on. So I think we should break it down into smaller pieces and just start asking ourselves some questions and looking at some important factors. So first of all, why do we only place people on the transplant list when they have a GFR of 15 or less? Now, the reason for that and the reason that the threshold has been set at 15 GFR is that this is the point at which a patient is actually going to need a transplant. Before they reach a GFR of 15, they're probably going to be okay in their functions. Of course, they're not going to be perfect fine, but you're still going to be okay. Once you reach this threshold, you reach a point where you really can't do your normal activities as well as you should be, and so you are in need of a transplant. So when you give someone a new kidney, it's only going to last for a certain period of time. New kidneys don't last forever. It's not something that you're going to have with you forever. Generally, doctors hope that a good kidney is going to last for somewhere between 10 and 15 years. So there is a time limit on your new kidney. Therefore, you don't want to give a patient a kidney when their own kidney function is still okay and it's still fine. In many cases, your own kidney is going to be the best kidney for you. So we don't want to give someone a kidney when they could still go on for some time with the kidney that they already have. You want them to use their own kidney to its maximum function because their own kidney is going to be the best kidney for them. So by giving a patient a kidney when the GFR reaches 15, we are maximizing the amount of benefit and increased lifespan that they're going to get from their new kidney. In addition to that, undergoing transplant surgery is not an easy task. It's not something simple and feasible that doesn't come with risk. Transplant surgery, just like many other surgeries, is going to have big risks. And so we don't want to put a patient in surgery in a risky situation that could cause them harm if they don't really need it. And then finally, something that you probably considered first, something which is most obvious, is that the NHS only has a finite amount of resources. They only have a finite amount of money and they need to realize and know where they want to allocate that money. And on top of that, of course, the NHS only has a finite amount of kidneys that they can give as transplants. So they wanna make sure that they're giving those kidneys to the people that are most in need, to the people that have the worst kidney function, to the people that have the lowest GFR. You can't just give a kidney to someone who says they want it the most. Now, the next thing that we wanna tackle is that this woman said that she wants a kidney transplant because she wants to have a baby. If we don't give her the kidney transplant, can she have a baby as she is right now? And the answer is absolutely no. First and foremost, her kidney function is already quite decreased. And when she ends up having a baby, if she does, the toll that it's gonna to take on her body to carry another human being inside of her is certainly going to affect her kidneys and her kidneys probably won't be able to keep up with all that stress. Second of all, we know the patient is a diabetic with type one diabetes, and we know that many patients with diabetes have high blood pressure. And high blood pressure is one of the biggest risk factors for kidney diseases and kidney problems. The reason being that kidneys have very, very small arteries leading to them and very, very small vasculature. And so when you try and pump blood at a very high pressure through very small arteries, you end up causing a lot of damage. And that's why in diabetic patients who also have high blood pressure, you end up seeing a lot of complications in the eyes and in the kidneys because those are the areas where we have very, very small vasculature. In addition to that, pregnant women are at risk of high blood pressure for a number of reasons. Most notably is a condition called preeclampsia, which is a condition that women get during pregnancy and it causes you to have increased protein in the urine, raised blood pressure and edema. So the fact that if she gets pregnant, she could have an additional risk of increased high blood pressure is definitely not going to help her kidneys. On top of that, women when they get pregnant can also get gestational diabetes, which could also lead to higher blood pressure. So generally pregnancy is a big risk for her at this time. Since having a baby would greatly increase the risks of having further kidney damage, this woman should not get pregnant. The next thing that we wanna tackle is, does this woman have an increased priority on the transfer list? So this woman is saying that she really wants to be put on the list because she wants to have a baby ASAP. Does that mean that she should have higher priority? So hopefully you know the answer to that question is no. Patients do not get increased priority on transplant lists just because they want to, or in fact, based on any social or desirable needs or wants. Patients are placed on transplant lists purely based on clinical evaluation. And that's something that's very important and crosses the board in medical decision-making and medical ethics. Clinical evaluation, justness, and fairness are the leading drivers for making these decisions. There's actually an objective point system that determines how high on the priority list you are for a kidney transplant. And some of the factors that they use to determine your priority on that list is your time since diagnosis, 
how long you've been on the waiting list for, your HLA match, which I'll explain in a second, and the age difference between the donor and the recipient. HLA stands for human leukocyte antibody, and the importance of HLA matching is that you need to match the immune system of the donor to the immune system of the recipient. And the reason for that is that if you insert a foreign object, let's say someone else's kidney, into a recipient's body, the recipient might reject that foreign object because it will see it as foreign. So you need to make sure that the immune system of the host matches the immune system of the donor so that when the donor gives them your kidney, you don't reject it. And the reason HLA matching is involved in determining your priority on the list is let's say that your immune system is only matched to one in a million kidneys out there. If that one in a million kidney shows up, then you should probably get it as opposed to someone else who has the HLA match with many, many other kidneys that could come up. So how do you approach this woman who's come to you and said that I want to be on the transplant list because I want to have a baby as soon as possible? Generally, taking into account all of the factors that we gave before, we know that her GFR is not low enough to warrant her being put on the transplant kidney list. And so the most important thing to do for this patient is to educate them. You want to tell them about the reasons why we do uh, choose a threshold to have a certain GFR for patients to go on the transfer list and why she does not meet that threshold. So hopefully explaining all the things that we discussed to the patient and talking to them about why it is that you need to reach a specific threshold before you get put on the transplant list will help them understand the situation better. Now, of course, in an ethical scenario, they might tell you that this patient's going to get very mad at you, this patient's gonna get very upset and they're gonna demand that they get on the transplant list ASAP. These are kind of really difficult situations to handle but generally you always want to remain calm, you always want to remain in a position of uh, seriousness and you want to simply explain and educate and say why it is that we can't do this, why it is that we can't do that while trying to calm them down and giving them as much information as possible if they need it. Okay, wow, this is actually turning out to be quite a long case with a lot of complicated topics. So I don't think it's all gonna fit in one video. I'm gonna be splitting this video into two parts. So this is part one that you just saw and part two will upload on the channel soon. Let's say 150 likes. If we hit 150 likes on this video, I'll upload part two. Something else that's important to think about is the age of the patient. And a lot of the time in MMI interview questions, they will ask you the scenario and then they'll say, So yeah, guys, I hope you found this dose useful. I hope it's been helpful for your MMI interview preparation. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.